Cotton Candy Feet sent me a brand new bag and I'm so excited to review it and try styling it with all of you. They sent me truly the most perfect Lolita Ida bag, which is interesting because over the years Ida bags have sort of evolved from being for more anime fans into actual J fashion. I want to talk a little bit about how that happened and the history of Ida bags and also explain the term Ida for Lolita fashion and for these bags. They both come from the Japanese word for pain, which is itai. In terms of Lolita fashion, an Ida is considered someone who wears Lolita fashion badly or in an inexperienced way. And it's a derogative term, a way to insult someone, to say that they're not a good Lolita. And now I found that over the years in my own experiences, people use the term Ida as more of a joke. They use it to kind of make fun of themselves and their past outfits or in sort of an abstract way, creating like characters who aren't real. I'm sure there are people who still use it genuinely, but I don't think that it has as much of a harmful feeling as it used to, at least only in my experience. And the reason that it was painful is because a bad Lolita would be painful to look at. Dumb. Silly. Also, Ida is part of the word Lolita, so that also attributes to it. Ida bags have a similar history where you would have a kind of fandom display for your favorite anime character, and it was supposed to be so over the top, so extreme, so chaotic that it would be painful to look at. I personally find looking at Ida bags really interesting. It's really entertaining and enjoyable to see the way that people create these displays for their favorite characters. Even when I'm not interested in the character and I don't know the character, it's still cool to see different ways that people display different items. I think that it's like a craft or a skill. Another interpretation of why it could be a pain bag is because it might be so distracting to you that you're looking at it and you accidentally end up tripping over something or walking into a wall which would cause you pain. <laughs> Ida bags involve from just displays on bags of character merch. It was a way to use anime merch. And through the years, you would suffer losses from either thieves taking the things off of your bag or just them falling off because they're bumped up against something or wear out. So Ida bags came around in a way to display that merchandise and your favorite characters and your favorite fandoms behind a protective window where they could be safer and you would have a better chance of keeping your items. It was really common to see people who weren't necessarily dressed up or into alternative fashion but carrying an Ida bag. And I think that a lot of the crossover was because there's a lot of people in J fashion who also like anime. Imagine that. So they would end up kind of wearing their Ida bag with their outfit, with their Lolita coordinate if they're a Lolita and then it sort of started to blend together. Ida bags evolved into J fashion and alternative fashion and they stopped being so strictly about anime and fandom merch and instead were just ways to display things that you like. You could make a collection of things that are revolved around a certain theme or you could use the display to just have all of one color and different items or you could have an assortment of different things and then it would be a representation of you. Ida bags also became popular with displaying enamel pins. Enamel pins have become so popular over the years and nobody knows what to do with them and that's a great way to put them all together and display them and also keep them safe. A few years ago I made a video about my enamel pin collection and I thought about making a video on where to display them and how to use them. And I haven't done that yet because honestly, it's something that I still struggle with. I have amassed so many enamel pins over the years. I had an Ida bag before from t around 2015 or 2016 is when I got it. It was the WeGo backpack style that had a heart window, except the window wasn't actually a full display. It didn't have any kind of back to hold things in it. It was just a window into the bag. So I sort of tried to makeshift it by pinning different towels to it that were cute and trying to display it. But eventually the straps broke on that backpack and I just decided to retire it. I haven't really used an Ida bag since because I'm just sort of overwhelmed with how much work goes into actually making a display. 
but I'm really excited that I have this bag and this opportunity to experiment with. I'm going to try using some different plushies and then ultimately I think I really want to use it for my enamel pins and I'm going to put together some sort of display. The Frilly Lovely Heart Eda Bag. And I want to compare the size to the Bubble Heart Bag from Cotton Candy Feet in case you have this one. It's a little bit smaller, but still can fit quite a lot in it and is really well constructed. They look so cute together. I really want Holly to wear this one and I'll wear this one together. That'd be so cute. This is a three-way bag, so there's hooks here at the top in order to have it be a handbag. There's hooks on the sides so that it can be a crossbody, and then there's hooks behind here and at the bottom so that it can be a backpack. The bag size is 35 centimeters by 31 centimeters by 12 centimeters, and that's including these ruffles. And then the front pocket has a five centimeter depth, and then this main pocket has a seven centimeter depth to it. My headpiece came untied. I'm gonna try to c carry on, but I don't know if it's gonna fall off. <laughs> This bag came with a long strap that you can use for the crossbody option. It came in this really cute cotton candy feet bag. I love these bags. I reuse them. I use them for like storing petticoats or wigs. So if you buy one of their bags, keep the bag that it comes in because it's great for storing things. They also sent me a belt for my birthday, which is unrelated, but thank you so much for this belt. I'm really excited to style it. It's so cute. It would look great with honey cake. Uh, yeah, there were two straps that are shorter and adjustable and you can use them for the backpack or as a handbag. This comes in a bunch of different colors that I don't remember off the top of my head, so I'll have to put that in editing, but I really like the purple because I don't have a purple bag and I wanted to have this option. And my old Ida bag was purple. So it's just such a nice compliment to pink. And also I have purple cotton candy feet shoes, so I thought that would be cute together. It's honestly great that cotton candy feet makes both shoes and bags because such an easy way to make your coordinate look cohesive is to match your shoes to your bag. Something that I really like about this Ida bag is that you can fully open the display. You can fully open it and then put stuff in there. Whereas a lot of other Eda bags, it's more of like a pocket window. So you kind of have to cram things down in it, but you can lay things out flat the way you want to and then just close it up. It also has this insert, which is great for pins. Um, Cotton Candy Feet mentioned that they were changing this. This bag is a sample. I received it before they were finished, before the pre-order. So they mentioned they were going to change this insert. I think the fabric on it. So it's a little bit different than the final product. You can put the insert in the back of the bag and have more depth for plushies or three-dimensional items that you want to display. But if you want to do something like pins that's flat, you can put it in the front and then you have more space to store things behind it. And then you get kind of two pockets out of it. There's also an option to order multiple inserts if you want to have a kind of contrasting color, or let's say you have a coordinate that's two different colors, you can feature that color in the insert. You could also just take the insert out and have the cotton candy feet lining display because that's really cute on its own. <gasps> I knew that was gonna happen. I knew it. Uh, let's take a short break before we get into the enamel pins. These are actually a lot of Holly's pins as well as mine, and I tried to put them all in here, but I do suspect that some of them are still on some of my berets and collars of um, vests and shirts because there was a few that I couldn't find. <laughs> we definitely need Kurilakuma with a knife. I have a Furby with a knife, but it's on my everyday backpack. I'm going to just sort of lay them on the insert and then push them through once I've committed to it. But I need to do something with this Pietro from Sugar Bones. It's so cute. Everyone kept sending it to me whenever they'd see this pin. And Holly actually got it for me immediately. Like as soon as it was dropped, she got it for me, which is so sweet. It has a changeable smile, so cute. This is a newer pin from Fluffy Tori. It's a she, her pin. I love pronoun pins. They're such a cute and fun way to just let people know your pronouns. My friend recently got me this dolly house brooch for Christmas, this bear. It's so cute. 
I love it. I definitely need to incorporate it. I have a bunch of really cute brooches from See Me, and I have one that's like a pastel color, and I don't know where it is. I think that it's on one of my berets, but I looked quickly through my berets and couldn't find it. But it would be perfect for this, so I need to locate it. I'm definitely gonna incorporate this fluffy Tori rainbow heart. I was looking for a time to use it, and the time is now. I like this Fruits Parlor pin because it doesn't scream angelic pretty the way that this like very branded one does. It's just sort of appreciating cute art and then if you know, you know. It is funny to put this branded AP one on things that aren't AP. I do enjoy doing that. Yeah. Okay, okay. I have these newer pins from Snow Priestess that were mailed to me. Thank you so much. I definitely want to use it because this one with the black hair, I feel like this is me. I identify with this pin. I like this. I think I'm good. I think I'm happy with how this is. I'm going to try to put all of these on with my nails. Hopefully I can. <laughs> oh gosh. Oh jeez. <laughs> I'm gonna put it in to the front. I'm kind of worried that maybe some of the edges might be covered. I'm not quite sure. Let's see. It looks so good. I am so pleased with it. I put together this cord in it, hoping that it would look cute with this. I'm gonna try wearing it out in the world, stuffing it full of stuff and see how much I can fit into it. Historically, cotton candy feet bags can withstand a lot of pressure, a lot of weight, a lot of stuff in them. I have used them for many, many conventions over the years with all of my camera equipment and other things, so I am pretty confident that this bag will hold up and also hold a lot in it, but I'm gonna test that out. I'm pushing the insert to the front so I have the maximum amount of storage room. Let's try it out in the world. <laughs> I put together this cord hoping that it would look cute with this bag. I have this Baby the Starshine Bright dress that Holly got me, my Ava hair split wig with some purple in it, this Kaneko pink blouse, this headpiece actually Holly made. Don't know if it's gonna be a cream and sugar item. It has a cream and sugar label. Maybe it will be. Stay tuned on their Instagram for that. And I'm gonna pair this with some cotton candy feet shoes and I'm so excited to go wear it.